Okay. All right, stand by. Looks like we are getting going finally. All right, we are live, and it is Friday night. The midpoint, the Ides of September are upon us, believe it or not. And as of right now, it is a decently quiet night. Still on the busy side in the tropics. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a little bit. I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onik from Chattanooga, Tennessee, USA. Thanks for joining us for the Friday night edition of Weather Overtime. Not a problem for tonight. Friday night football picking up a few sprinkles of rainfall out there, but really that's about all we wound up with. Not really seeing too much of anything else for the time being anytime soon. We do have the potential of some more showers and thunderstorms into the weekend. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Uh, happy, let's say, Lashana Tova. Hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, happy Rosh Hashanah to anybody who's uh, celebrating for tonight. My mom, the only Jewish themed tie that I have. I'm Lutheran, by the way, but again, saluting everybody out there who is uh, celebrating their Jewish faith for tonight. The only Jewish themed tie that I have is a Hanukkah one, so this is about as good as it gets on there. So, uh, Happy New Year, and hopefully enjoy the weekend out there. Looking like it's going to be a very nice one for uh, any celebrations, and hopefully it's a quiet one with the weather is concerned. But a happy uh, New Year to everybody on this Rosh Hashanah. We're looking at a changeover in seasons coming up very soon as we get into the next week or so. We've got about a week and a couple of hours left in the season. The equinox starts uh, one week from tonight, so we're just almost to that point of changeover. It'll be close to about midnight when that happens, but the equinox uh, less than a week, just about a week away. And we're getting very close to that changeover to where the daylight continues to shrink and those nights continue to get very much on the long side. Let's take a look outdoors and see what's going on. We do not have a wreck, but we do have a area of congestion sh shaping up around the intersection on the Tomahawk Crane and Rigging Camera from CHI Memorial Stadium in South Central Chattanooga. 75 north to 24 west. Usually this is pretty well backed up and there's a lot of construction, heavy construction just west of this camera. So northbound 75 to westbound 24, that could be a bit of a problem. 24 east to 75 south. There's no wreck according to TDOT, but there is an awful lot of Friday night congestion going on so you may want to try to avoid this area some of that could be friday night football some of that could be just out and about for a friday evening but uh, maybe an area you want to avoid just to be on the safe side there from this is all in the epb fiber optics weather cam network by the way which you can get to at our website wdef.com slash weather traffic moving along quite nicely at 153 between 64 and back toward the tennessee river Hopefully a decent sunset uh, from earlier tonight. Chattanooga Theater Center from the Speedy's Total Car Care looking back toward the area into and around the Veterans Memorial Bridge. Uh, decently calm and quiet with no big problems seen into the last several hours. A few sprinkles taking place uh, here and there. But beyond that, we just did not really see too much in the way of anything involving a huge amount of rainfall for the area and probably not going to be seeing as much throughout the course of the next uh, couple of hours. So decently, again, quiet for now. Downtown, taking a look uh, at the area where Sunset was and Sylvester the Spider hanging on nicely there, keeping downtown a little bit more free of anything involving uh Spider, anything involving mosquitoes out there. That Lee Point camera from the Plainview Outdoor Advertising Space. Bailey's Heating and Air, the sponsor for the downtown Chattanooga camera. From the opposite direction, looking back to the area around the north flank of Lookout Mountain and looking off to the distance, not too sure if that's a plane or a star or a planet out there for right now. I should have taken a better view of what it looked like on the star charts just a little while ago. Uh, looking across Broad Street to the area into and around where the new 7-Eleven is going to be in. Hopefully they open that up pretty soon because I could definitely use a new slush uh, anytime soon. Right across the street would actually be nice. Downtown Chattanooga, lights of Finley Stadium lit up quite nicely. 
and I-24 traffic also moving along, but heavy for this evening. Uh, east and westbound, rather on the heavy side there. And last but not least, Island Cove Marina and Resort. Some sky shine, but also not seeing a lot of problems with totally cloudy skies. So uh, some good news on that. Looking at the potential for rain in the forecast, but no raindrops on the water for right now. Temperatures very much on the mild side. We're back into the lower 70s so far. And again, temperatures very nice. Uh, into the rest of the weekend. Probably a lot cooler than normal uh, than what we usually get at this time of the year because of the fact that we're having more clouds and more rainfall coming on through and that could be something into the rest of the forecast. Below normal on the high temperature today, 18 degrees below our last record high which was set back in 1991 and a record low that was set just uh, six years earlier than that. Yes, yeah, six years of uh, 46 degrees back in 1985. One one hundredth of an inch of rain for today, so we're only behind by two inches for the month of September and behind for the year. I'm going to have to check that. It looks like something is, uh, that looks like yesterday's reading, so apologies for that, but we'll get that straightened out here pretty soon. Uh, thanking our viewer from, didn't get a location on this, Raven Duval. thank you very much for the picture. Uh, it's not often that you get the, a trifecta, kind of a hat trick type situation where it comes to weather pictures. This is a really neat set shot. I'm going to assume sunset because usually when the thunderstorms pop up, it's uh, late during the day. And so I'm assuming that the glow out there is from sunset, lightning bolt, sunset lights, and a double rainbow something really cool to be able to see there so a nice little trip titch going on uh, to see that that's our west shore home weather window picture of the day thank you raven duval for sending that in if you've got weather pictures send them to us on facebook x or instagram we also post those pictures the ones you just saw and others like them on our social media pages so you can see all of these up close and personal if you've got a picture weather in involved send them to us at pictures at wdef.com would love to know more about what you're seeing out there and to find out more about what's actually happening in and around the area. For the outdoors forecast into the weekend, there will be chances of showers and thunderstorms out across the area. So if you're heading out to catch a fish, if you're going to be doing anything outdoors in the way of uh, hiking, fishing, boating, anything like that, you should be on the lookout for the potential of some more showers and thunderstorms coming on through. It doesn't look like a huge chance. Again, we'll show you the possibilities coming up here uh, in just a little while, so definitely want to stay tuned on that. Same thing applies if you're going out, again, on a broad, flat surface like a golf course, metal cleats on your feet, big metal rod in your hand, and lightning off to the distance, that is not a good place to be. So if you have any plans for outdoors, definitely want to make certain that you are paying attention to what the weather is going to be doing because you will be needing that uh, as you get out and about for this weekend. Whatever you've got in the way of uh, getting out and about this weekend, just please plan ahead for that. Very mild on the temperatures, not too shabby, way below normal for this time of the year. No argument from anybody here from what I can see as we've had some very hot days over the last several weeks out there. We do have a few scattered showers trying to hold on. A couple of them uh, northwest and northeast of Chattanooga. Those have done a pretty good job in falling apart up north of Dayton and back to the north of Murphy around the Tennessee-North Carolina line. But Titan radar not really showing a lot of problems there. And then back toward Huntsville, Florence, northwestern parts of Alabama. We do have, again, a little bit of activity trying to hang on there all the way down to Birmingham. Some of these were some stronger, even close to severe weather storms over the last several hours. That does not look to be sticking around. We may see the potential of some more problems, again, with outdoor activities this weekend. We've got this little plume of moisture. Let me go back just one second here. Uh, this is kind of neat to be able to see this on the visible satellite picture. It's a nice little plume of moisture out this direction. And that's where some of these showers and thunderstorms came from. Looking back to the west, we've got even more moisture coming on through. And that's going to be our next 
system that's going to be making its way toward us. Lee being shepherded off to the northeast by the, our latest cold front and high pressure. And then high pressure down to the Gulf also helping to aim that storm away from us. All that moisture moving up. You notice the clouds and the rainfall here. High pressure escorting that up from the Gulf all the way across northern Mexico and into and around the midsection of the country. This is where we're going to be seeing our next chances of weather come from, from the west and from the southwest. And that'll give us the potential of the rainfall into the weekend. We'll talk more about Lee coming up here in just a little while. Heading into tomorrow morning, some showers and thunderstorms developing down to our south and west, increasing through the day and moving back up to the northeast. This is about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, eastern time tomorrow. Bit of a lull and then more potential of showers and thunderstorms very early Sunday morning. Those head out of the picture. We catch another bit of a break Sunday afternoon. And then maybe some fog Monday morning. Temperatures for lows in the lower 50s to mid to upper 50s or so. And then for Monday afternoon, uh, back to work, back to school. Mid 70s, lower 80s. Again, pretty nice out there all the way on through and not seeing much of any problems uh, again anytime out there as we get into the forecast after the weekend. But we will be seeing potential problems uh, into the weekend itself from what it looks like for right now uh, for outdoor activities especially. Let's run the numbers into the weekend for the seven-day forecast. Again, we've got the numbers heading back into the upper 70s to lower 80s and then staying in the lower 80s all the way into next week that is where we start to see again the potential for less in the way of rainfall coming on through plenty of sunshine and very dry conditions but not hot not seeing any temperatures above 90 degrees for quite some time which is just fine for right now and looking good into uh, pretty much the end of september unless something radically changes we get something tropical coming up from the gulf or something some other pattern changes Little, if anything, really going to be making its way on through, causing any problems. So uh, good news for what we can see there. Don't forget Tuesday. It's not an official holiday, but it's a fun little thing. Uh, international Talk Like a Pirate Day. Your opportunity to wear the eye patch, hoist the Jolly Roger, talk like a pirate during your corporate presentation meeting. A little bit of some way to do something a little bit differently, so looking pretty good out there for now. I believe there's a uh, One Piece miniseries live action on one of the streaming services. I can't remember which one, uh, but your opportunity to be able to take a look and see uh, just a little bit differently out there. And if you pick up one of your crew in Penzance, be careful. Some of those can be some fairly shady characters out there. So have fun. Tuesday, again, International Talk Like a Pirate Day. Enjoy it uh, and have fun out there. Taking a look into the tropics, give me two seconds here and make certain I got the right one picked up. All right, Lee is a shadow of its former self. It is still off the coastline and very lopsided at this point. We've got some low-level clouds on the lower right-hand corner of the screen, and that is... Uh, a good sign that dry air is starting to make its way into the interior and eroding the storm from outside in. That can happen very easily, but the structure of the storm, the turning of those winds is still there. And that's why it is still a hurricane, even though winds are down to about 80 miles per hour. It's now picking up speed and moving to the north-northeast at about 20 miles per hour or so. Now, in the next couple of hours, this storm, uh, by this time tomorrow, should be on shore. It should be coming ashore as a tropical storm. And as of right now, the spaghetti models, all the lines here lining up with the National Hurricane Center official forecast in the uh, line here, that loop, that cone-shaded area, the main part of that storm aiming off toward the east. So most of this looks like landfall will not be a problem. The worst winds from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock, that's position-wise, not time-wise. Uh, the storm's worst winds, again, right on through this area here where those winds turning around. Usually the northeast section of the storm is the worst of the worst. And that means Halifax, Nova Scotia, Maybe Newfoundland will be picking up some more problems from this storm. The wraparound effect, mainly rain and wind into and around portions of the East Coast area. So it doesn't seem to be too much of a major problem, but for this area, for the United States at least. But if you're traveling anywhere between Bangor and Boston, please keep an eye on 
uh, what's going on with your forecast out there. Now, for the wave potential, uh, that, again, has been... Uh, really on the heavy side, very close to the coastline where we see some pretty good rip current potential out there. But most of the heaviest amount of wave action will be going way up to around portions of the area around Nova Scotia. We could see some minor leftover residual wave action going on into and around the Delmarva Peninsula, New York down to the Carolina coastline. Doesn't look like a lot, but there could be some leftover wave action going on. The big thing is going to be the winds. This was a fairly tight system, and now over the last about 24 hours, it's really started to spread out by just a little bit. And that wind field, even though it's going to be diminishing by overnight into, again, very close to a tropical storm, Category 1 hurricane, and then making landfall as a tropical storm, Look at the wind speeds here again. Tropical storm force winds extending out several hundred miles as the storm spreads out in the atmosphere. So it's possible from the Canada main border down into New England, we could see some rip roaring winds. Uh, parts of uh, around the area of Mount Washington, New Hampshire, they're expecting wind gusts several thousand feet up on top of the mountain of 120 miles per hour plus. So down on the ground, that could translate into winds of 30 to 40 miles per hour in various locations. So this is going to be the main danger as that storm system makes its way a little bit closer uh, to New England overnight tonight and into very early tomorrow. By this time tomorrow, Saturday night, the storm system should be shifting over toward the St. Lawrence Seaway. Uh, the Canadian Maritimes and taking a right-hand turn moving out, <clears throat> excuse me, into the Northwest Atlantic and basically not a problem for anybody else after that. So uh, could it regenerate? Maybe, but for right now, as it heads out into the Atlantic, it doesn't really look like uh, too much of a problem. Now, here's the big thing. We have Lee. We just talked about that, and that is the main weather story. We got a lot of other stuff to talk about, and this is why it needs to be paid attention to. If you're traveling Gulf, Florida, Keys, Bahamas, East Coast of the United States, Bermuda even, wherever you're heading, or if you're just, again, uh, know people in those areas, now's the time to keep a very close eye as to what's going on. And we still have Margo wandering around the middle Atlantic, expected to kind of loop the loop here maybe in the next few days before maybe wandering off toward the Iberian Peninsula by just a little bit. So I don't see that as being an immediate threat. And it's a tropical storm now, winds of 65 miles per hour. The monitor I'm looking at is very fuzzy, so I have to look at the big monitor above me here for this. So this might be bothering Western Europe relatively soon. We have a new tropical depression, number 15, in the middle of the Atlantic, well to the east of the Leeward Islands and the Bahamas and the Caribbean. But uh, that could become tropical depression Nigel the end storm, and then the next area right back through here, a low chance of development, but it does look like the potential of some development here. If this holds together, this could become tropical depression, tropical storm, number, tropical depression number 16. It could become, if it gets strong enough, tropical storm Ophelia. That's the O storm. So that, again, is going to be uh, the best potential for right now. So that's four systems going on in the Atlantic. One will not be a problem tomorrow. Two of these might be a problem later on. Definitely bears watching. And again, please, if you're traveling, keep a very close eye as to what's happening. You don't want to be traveling someplace where the storms are heading into. And especially keep an eye well before you leave. Make certain you know what's going on because as that forecast gets a little bit closer, uh, that, again, is the time to start thinking about turning around and finding some other plans just to be on the safe side. And again, this is the time of the year to watch that. How are we doing on hurricane season? Well, we passed the peak of it just about this last week around Saturday or Sunday. The midpoint of the season is about September 10th. And we, are, we still have uh, in this famous graphic known as the campfire graphic, for hurricanes uh, in yellow and hurricanes and tropical storms, uh, the amount over a period of time from roughly preseason in June to postseason in December, you can have 
tropical systems in December or January, as we saw this year. You can have them in May or April. At any point in time, the conditions are correct. You can have those storms. If they can happen. If you put together the right recipe, they will possibly occur. And the midway point for all of this, the peak of all this in the season, is again about a week or so before tonight on September the 10th. So we have passed the midway point but we've still got the entire latter half of the season to go. September, October, even early November can be very busy times. So we are past the point of the mid-set mid area, but it is time to make certain that uh, we all pay attention to what may be heading our direction. So please keep that in mind as you go throughout the next several days and weeks. Please keep it tuned to News 12, and we'll keep you updated as to uh, what might be heading our direction. I want to give this a try uh, real quick. It was beautiful weather for the uh, lookouts tonight. And I want to switch over here real quick to talk about this. I've been practicing on this for a little while. just want to make certain everybody knows about this. Downtown, they should be starting the fireworks uh, pretty soon. The lookouts, just a few minutes ago, were in the top of the ninth inning. So fireworks spectacular coming up here. Uh, in just a little bit. There may be rain delays this weekend, so if you're heading out there. Also Sunday, a very important day downtown at the uh, Lookout Stadium as it's going to be Deaf Awareness Day on Sunday. I'm doing my best to practice uh, ASL, uh, hopefully at some point in time, to do the entire weather forecast uh, in sign language, but I haven't quite gotten there yet. I'm learning to, but if you're heading out for Deaf Awareness Day on Sunday, should be hopefully pretty good weather, just the chance of a few uh, scattered showers and thunderstorms out there. The chances of rain this weekend, again, are not great. They're possible, but there's not a huge amount, and again, hopefully not enough to spoil the baseball games at AT&T Field. And then Monday, we're back to sunny skies and some very mild conditions out there. So hopefully you enjoy the weekend and no major problems to be seen. Again, for right now, that's uh, the way that it looks. So hopefully looking pretty good. Teachers and administrators have our weather experts in your classroom. You know the address. We've talked about it all week long. WDEF.com slash weather, weather in the classroom. Uh, proud sponsor, Food City of the Weather in the Classroom program. So if you'd like to have us there, we'd love to appear, but we just don't show up. you got to make certain that you uh, send us the email so we have the ability to add the details to our public file, which we keep for the FCC and everybody to see our records as a broadcast uh, authority for the community. But again, please send us the information. With nothing really going on this weekend, no severe weather is expected. This weekend would be a wonderful opportunity to get your weather radio programmed. Please consider doing that. If you don't know how to do it, that's not a problem. Let us know. Go to the website, wdef.com slash weather, and let us know again by just checking the website. And we have a video there. It's a short one, which explains how easy it is to make certain that it, you can get your weather radio programmed as soon as possible because this is a life-saving piece of equipment. So please uh, make the opportunity, take the opportunity to get this thing programmed if you haven't done it already, and it could save your life at some point in time. So just uh, please make certain you consider that. That should just about do it. Uh, short and version for tonight didn't even go half an hour this time around. We'll have more on the forecast, as always, available at WDEF.com slash weather. I'm on all these social media networks, so stop by and say hi at some point in time and let us know. Uh, let's see, Bishop Bob Midget on the comments section for Facebook. Welcome, good evening. Yes, hope you have a good, and Mr. Josh, have a good, <clears throat> excuse me, weekend as well. And yes, in the Gulf of Mexico, if anything happens, we could see some very warm water lead to what's called rapid intensification. So that is a very good possibility out there. Uh, hopefully nothing like that coming our direction anytime soon. But if it does happen, we'll keep you updated through the weekend on the website and, of course, on our social media pages as well. Don't forget to join meteorologist Todd Highslip later on this weekend. He'll be on the 11 o'clock show Saturday and Sunday, and I'll be back with you on Monday evening. Chip Chapman will have more coming up on the morning show bright and early on 
Monday morning. I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onik. Thanks for joining us for Weather Overtime for Friday evening, the 15th, the Ides of September. And stay tuned to News 12 on air and online throughout the rest of the weekend. Hope you have a happy and safe one and get you back here safely again on Monday evening. Thanks for joining us.